Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Breaking 90 podcast. Uh, I'm here with my co-host, Jerrica Rydell. We are the coaches of Breaking 90 Fitness. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for listening. Hey, Jer, how you doing? Not too bad. How have you been? Yeah, I've been good. What's, uh, what's new in your world? Um, the weather's been wonky. It's like no snow, snow, freezing rain, snow. So I've been trying to, trying to stay on top of my winter running, but it's been a bit chaotic. A couple accidents um trying to get the good gear out but yeah it's been fun like were you running accidents you wiped out oh yeah absolutely oh. Oh, going, see, going this, down this, it's, <laughs> this is why I is that motivating <laughs> <laughs> I was, as I said that I was like I don't think this is motivating for anybody out there no want to know why it's because I went out with improper gear and I always am a huge proponent on buying good stuff for what you want to do and I didn't I just went out in like my normal road runners on a slippery day so wear the good shoes with the treads and maybe the little ice picks in there and and when i say winter running i am like winter jogging so slow that you can walk beside me right like that's safe right that's a yeah. bit safer so um it's just about movement and i think a lot of people think you know winter oh I, they'll go out and do a run and oh look at my time like who looks at their time in the winter it should be at least a minute or a minute and a half slower probably right. than your summertime so For i don't sure. even look I just get out there to get moving and enjoy the the snow and get to get outside. It's hard. It's important to be outside, but with this, the short days and stuff. Yeah. Feels yeah, good. you're right. I, I've like, I've thought about getting a treadmill so many times and, and the biggest thing holding me back is that I need an electrician to actually put the, the um, proper power <laughs> supply in for a treadmill <laughs> in my basement. But then I'm like, Ugh, it's just going to force me like indoors even more. Um, yeah. There's, there's definitely pros and cons, uh, but yeah. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. It's it's good to get outside. I try to make sure you either walk after supper or go for, I mean, the dogs help to they force you to walk, but um, yeah, it's important to get outside even on the minus 25 days like today. Wow. Is it that cold there? It was, oh, I've been outside in a bit, but it was so cold this morning. Oh yeah. My oh, car wow. said like minus 21 and it wasn't even with the wind. Oh wow. I do not miss <laughs> Northern Ontario. <laughs> it was, she was a crisp one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um oh, okay so what i want to talk about today is i just want to like help people who are starting out with exercise so this is for the person who doesn't really know what they should be doing um in a gym or or at home for your home workouts like they're, they're just kind of unsure of how to get started um, because I know a lot of people fall into that bracket and, and you, like, you've heard us talk about it lots before doing anything is better than nothing. So don't, don't get that, um, twisted up. If you're listening to this, like if you can start with walking, that's great. If you can start with watching YouTube videos online or doing P90X or whatever, like any of that is great. But if you want a little bit of direction, that's what this episode is about. Um, Perfect. so like my my initial thoughts is every january in a in a public gym you see like the person come in and they'll like they'll like walk over to the chin-up bar and do like five chin-ups and then they'll like walk over to the bench press and do like two sets of bench and then they'll do some curls and then they'll do some leg press and then they'll just jump on a treadmill and like clearly that person is not really sure where they should be going what they should be doing they don't have any direction but the intentions are there and they're ready to make change so what what's your advice for that person who hasn't spent the amount of time in the gym that obviously you and I have like what what do you recommend getting started right off the hop right off the hop would be what like think about what's your purpose in the gym like why are you there what do you want to get from being in there um and I mean we're huge proponents on strength training and and when I say gaining muscle mass is should be one of the top goals, I don't mean like getting huge, right? I'm saying we should all be striving for increasing our muscle mass in order to, you know, protect our joints, longevity, health. Like I'm not saying to get massive, right? So ask yourself what your goal is. Even if your goal is fat loss, right? We should still be strength training. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we all, we talk about, so at first ask yourself what your goals are. You know, maybe it's to increase mobility. Maybe it's to increase muscle mass. Maybe it's to lose weight um, and have that in the back of your mind. That is step one. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. The, the one thing I want to throw in too that a lot of people probably don't know is that when we put strain on our bones and our muscles and our joints, 
it makes them stronger. So it, even from, even without adding muscle mass, by putting strain on your bones, mm -hmm. you increase bone density. So this yes. is particularly important as you age that you increase and maintain that bone density so that you don't become brittle and you don't break things as easily when you fall. Um, that this is a huge, huge reason alone to take on some form of resistance training. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially, um, as we approach, like some women approach like menopausal age, that's where we really start to see the bone density decrease at a rapid, a more quick, quick rate. So making sure we get some type of stress strain on those bones and muscles is so important. Okay. So now step one would be, you're saying we're walking into a gym or we're at home. Uh, I would like to help both people if both. we can. So, but, yeah. but we can, we can talk about it a little bit separately. A little bit too. Of both. I think um, we need to talk about the warm up. Yeah. That would be a absolutely. good place to start. Absolutely. Whether you're in a gym or whether you're at home, typically your goal of the warm up would be to increase your heart rate, right? Get blood flow to the, to the body. So it will be at a rapid rate, a quick rate. Um, so warming up, geez, however you really choose, yeah. just increasing your heart rate. Uh, it could be hopping on a treadmill, it could be, you know, doing some jumping jacks at home. Um, so first get your heart rate up. And then I would say, let's figure out what body part or what, what we're working that day and warm that area. Up. So that would be the next step. Yeah. So this is something that a lot of people either neglect or overdo um the warm-up mm. shouldn't the warm-up shouldn't leave you feeling fatigued to the point that it affects the workout um a lot of people a lot of people get all this confusion around do i do cardio first or strength training first and it really comes down to your goals like if the cardiovascular yeah. side of thing is more important to you then do it first if the strength training is more important to you then do it first um Perfect. but you can start with some cardio to get warm but it shouldn't be like oh yeah, I did an hour on the treadmill to warm up for my strength training. Like it's going to take away from your strength training, hundred um, percent. So start, start by getting warm, doing whatever you want really doesn't matter. Most people who are into a serious program will warm up by doing the exact same movements they're going to do under load. So it's like, if you're doing squats that day, you would warm up with like body weight squats and then light squats and then slightly heavier squats and then squats. Um, that's, that's one way to warm up, but take a little bit longer to warm up than you think you need um, without crushing yourself. That's, that's a huge, huge piece of advice. It's going to stop you from getting, or it's going to help prevent you from getting injured. And it's going to, uh, it's actually going to help you perform big time. Definitely. Yep. Just make sure you're not super fatigued going into the workout. That's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind. I feel warm, you know, my body temps up a bit. Okay. Ready to go. Like yeah. around time so for, for some, some people it's five minutes for some people that's, you know, maybe 15 minutes, right? Like we all raise our temperature at a different rate and yeah. our intensity is a little bit different. So I'm not going to give you a time, but I'm just going to say, make sure you feel warmer and um yeah then go for it now as far as the the exercise component goes there's like there's not a right way to do things there's lots of wrong ways to do things but there's there's not necessarily one right way um you'll see some people will do full body routines some people will do split body routines like that's fine what i would recommend here as a general piece of advice is have a plan so walking into the gym and, and not having a plan, you're probably going to, it's still better than doing nothing, but you're, you're probably not using your time as effectively as possible. So, so have a plan. Think about um, how many days a week am I going to come to the gym? How long am I going to spend at the gym per session or in my house if you're doing this at home too? Um, how long am I going to spend per workout session? And what is the main focus? Um, I. I would say don't don't waste your time. Don't it's not necessarily a waste of time, but don't hyper focus on one area and neglect another area of your body. For most people listening to this, the goal is general health. You should be taking a well-rounded approach. So don't don't skip leg day. <laughs> but for some people who are listening to this, they're like, oh, you know, my arms jiggle when they're above my head. So I have to just do triceps every day of the week. Yeah. No, right? A, we don't lose body fat where we want to lose body fat. 
right? So working out our whole body also, like if I work out, you know, I have a bar on my back and I'm doing legs, well, I'm still burning calories as a whole. So yes, I might actually lose fat on my arms. So don't, like you said, don't neglect or hyper focus on one specific area. That's perfect. For sure. That it is something that I see a lot. It's something that I've uh, I've seen my own father do lots is where he'll he'll be like, hey, I started back at the gym. And I'm like, cool, what are you doing? Well, I do a half hour on the treadmill and then I go through the weight circuit two times and then I leave and I come back the next day and I do the identical thing. And I come same back thing. the next day and I do the identical thing. Stop doing the exact same thing every single day. <laughs> um, and if we're doing the same thing every day, we'd already talked about lifting weights or doing whatever it may be, put strain on the muscles and joints. If we're doing that repetitively every single day, if you think about any other repetitive things we do, that can cause a repetitive strain injury that can cause some type of injury, right? We have to, we are breaking the muscle down when we lift weights. So we have to allow it to recover. So yeah. maybe you're starting out, maybe you have two different routines. If they're full, full body, great, but let's try to pick two different routines and two different exercises to start. Or maybe it's an upper body day and a lower body day and we're flip-flopping. That's fine, but just try to give the body part a rest at least a day um, so that we can recover. That's a good thing. Being, kind of being sore is fine. You're going to be sore in the beginning. It's fine. Um, but you don't need to constantly grind yourself into the ground. Like You could probably get away with two, three, or four days of strength training, and it'll be plenty. Um, you don't need to be doing this five, six, or seven days a week. Listen to your body, especially in the beginning, if you need an extra day of rest. Maybe that's a good day to just go walk on the treadmill or go for a bike ride at the gym instead of hitting the weights again. Like, listen to your body, listen to what's sore. If something is really, really, really friggin' sore, focus on a different area of muscles on the body. That's okay. Um, if, if you're going twice a week, then you probably should be doing full body both times because right. you, you, you want to hit those muscles probably twice. If you're going three or four times a week, then you might want to split your body up by doing like upper body movements one day and lower body movements another day or pushing movements one day and pulling movements another day. It doesn't really matter, guys. Doing something, do it consistently and constantly challenging your body to adapt is what's going to make the progress here. Go ahead. I know you want to. I'm really I really glad you said that because that was the next point I wanted to talk about was constantly challenging your bodies. Okay. So we have our, you know, some routines set in place and we're doing them consistently, maybe every other day, you know, did my upper this week and whatever. So now it's week three and we've been doing the same things over and over and over again. And it feels really easy by week three or week two, it's getting easier. We need to make sure that we're adding change. So we don't have to change the exercises. Let's say we're still getting comfortable. It's still new to us. We don't need to change the exercises, but I want you to either A, increase your reps, right? So make it a little tougher that way. B, increase your weight, making it tougher that way, right? Seeing change by adding weight, making it tougher. Um, if you're looking for a little, maybe, I don't know if you want to, if you're shorter on time and you want more cardiovascular work, you can decrease your rest time. Um, so just make sure that there's some type of, of change happening over the course of at least, you know, every two weeks, maybe make a change or every three weeks, make a change when things start to feel okay. This, this, you know, let's say today I want to do eight reps on a squat and normally by eight, you know, I'm starting to get a little jello legs, but now, but now I'm feeling, um, by sorry, by <laughs> rep number eight, I it's easy. I want you to do 10 or maybe I want you to add more weight. So that's, that's, I want us to do some constant, constant change over that course of the program. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Progressive overload. Um, if you're unfamiliar with progressive overload, look it up. It's, it's really, um, it's a really simple, it's a really simple definition. It's really simple to understand, look it up and, and think about how you can apply it to your training. Um, so we're, we're not going to dive too deep into what your program needs to look like, because I don't believe that there is one right way to do it, but have a plan and follow something, go on Google and look for something. There's tons of great stuff out there, guys. Um, just make sure you have a plan rather than going in there all willy nilly all over the place. So um, what are your thoughts on, on like uh, cool down rehab type of stuff, Jay? especially when you're finishing and you know, your heart rate's high, you just crushed your workout. Um, make sure you don't just walk out of the gym with the heart, your heart beating like crazy. So find a way to cool down. Um, 
I mean, we, you can walk on the treadmill and cool down. You can head to the mat station and, and, you know, do some, some stretching, um, just allow your body and your heart rate to come down gradually. And, um, I'm trying to think, yeah, that's kind of the best two ways that I see it. The only thing I want to add Listen. is your hydration. Um, you, you've heard us talk about it a lot. Make sure you're drinking water before, during, and after it's going to make a huge difference in your recovery. Um, Mm -hmm. during your cool down have lots of water hydrate you'll be surprised if you weigh yourself if you weigh yourself before and after a workout without water you'll be you'd be surprised at the weight change just from your your exhaling your sweating how much, mm -hmm. how much weight you you how much water weight you are losing during a workout that shouldn't be happening you should be hydrating to the point that you're not seeing that happen um, you should probably even be coming out of a workout heavier because of the water that you're consuming so that that's, that's something right. to be a yeah, that's something to be aware of for sure. Um, Can I just touch on home workouts briefly? Yeah. Um, I know at, at home, a lot of people will start and you know, you have nothing, right? I just don't want you to overcomplicate it. Um, the same sort of principles apply. So find something to bring your heart rate up. You know, at home, it's don't complicate, pick four exercises, right? Do them, repeat them. But same thing, don't do the exact same four exercises tomorrow at home. But if you get access, you know, over time, a good way with home workouts is using a clock. You know, this week, maybe you're doing those exercises for 30 seconds. Maybe next week you're increasing that to 40 seconds, right? So there's different ways um, to make things harder at home when you don't have the weights to add. Or maybe over time you do get some dumbbells or bands. So there's, there's bands. ways to add resistance. We love bands um, at home where you don't feel like you have to go and buy a bunch of dumbbells, right? So increase your, increase your time spent um, doing that exercise. If you have no equipment at home, if you're just body weight, you're going to be doing a ton of variations of squats, push-ups, and core work. Um, you probably, you probably should only be doing it like three or four times a week and splitting it up because you're going to be hammering those muscle groups. That's fine. Um, but don't, don't do it day after day after day. Like in your in-between days, focus more on just like cardio or walking or running, anything like that, stretching, doing some yoga videos, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. but, but once you get to the point where you're not able to challenge yourself as much with the squats and the push-ups, or because you just have to increase the time so much of the intensity, that's when you really need to consider introducing something. And a band is going to be your cheapest, um, most versatile option. You can, you can do full body workouts with one band, um, get it in your life, look up some YouTube videos or reach out to us and we can help you with that for sure. Yeah. Then they're, they're not, they're not expensive. So it's a, it's a no. great alternative and they usually come in like packs of four with different resistance. So then you're, you're laughing. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're the best. Um, especially with traveling and everything too. I, that's what um, I use, yeah. The, the last thing that I'll add here is, is make sure, especially in the beginning that you take it a little slower. Um, you don't need to crush yourself right off the hop. It's not going to get you faster results take it slower, make sure that you are recovering, make sure that your nutrition is complementing your training so that you can recover fully. Um, and, and maybe spend a little bit of time in, in your off time doing some of the rehab work, the stretching and mobility work that's going to help you heal a little bit quicker. That's going to be really beneficial as you start out on this journey. Um, this was, uh, this was meant to be pretty general, general stuff for you guys though, who are getting started at the beginning of the year. So if, if there's anything you want to take a deep dive into, reach out to us and, and we can, we can certainly dive deeper into this topic, but I don't need it to become overwhelming. Um, any, any last words? You're pretty good with all that. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's perfect for someone starting out. Cool. Um, so the, the last tip I'm going to give you guys is I know there's a lot of alcohol this time of the season. One, one life-saving tip that I have for you guys is try to consume water between every alcoholic beverage. It's going to help with the hydration. It's going to help you stay full. It's going to help you drink less. It's going to help you feel better the next day. It's really, really simple um, in theory, but when the time comes, you, you have to set yourself up for success. Get your water bottles ready and actually physically force yourself to have water in between each alcoholic beverage. It's going to make a huge difference. Um, so you feel so much better the next day and you yeah. won't it'll help with that like next day bloat feeling and, and everything and um you'll actually probably end up cutting calories back because you just you don't have enough if you keep drinking water between you don't have time to drink that many other drinks so sure. it's actually uh it's, it's very helpful for sure 
Awesome. Guys, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know, post them below or send us a private message. Um, make sure you rate this and review it wherever you're listening to it. Take a screenshot and share it on your Instagram. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Thanks again. Have a great day.